Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. It is four o'clock in the afternoon and I am shooting this Arthur Adams video. What we're going to do is we're going to look at some of this stuff. There's no way that we're going to be able to get through all of this, but I grabbed a small stack of art from my um, storage and brought it in so that we could uh, peruse them. None of these are really in great shape, so uh, I had them in backboards and bags, but mo most of the, the stuff that I was buying at this time, you know, you, it wasn't buying them on eBay, so you're just happy that you could find a copy of them. But anyway, but the, I, I tried to grab some things that I thought were a little unusual. We probably won't go through the X-Men annual, although I know people probably would want me to, but I thought it would be funner to look at this other stuff. We can always come back and revisit art again, so... um. Let's start with the Godzilla. Let's see what we got. I'm going to pause this for a second. Yeah, my, my goal on the YouTube channel has been to kind of keep things fun for people so that you have a, a nice resting spot where you can come and just look at comics and we'll all chill together. So anyway, this is a rad cover. It's really, really cool. Um, we'll, we'll check out the date. I'm kind of curious of what year he did this. I have no idea. Honestly, I didn't even know I owned this comic book. <laughs> I remember another Godzilla book that I have, I think. But yeah, I don't even remember owning this. Um, so, what's the... 19... Oh, God, I can't read that. 1992, it looks like. So, alright, let's check it out. Godzilla! Whoa! <laughs> alright. That is cool. The rendering in the background is actually a little heavy-handed. It's like like some of this here gets a little a little wild style. Is he in Kim himself? Yeah, he was in Kim himself. This is really in his career. This is great though. Man, that is so awesome. And all this stuff is really nice. The ships are great too. Man, that is so cool. Oh man, that is awesome. I love the um the tilt of the ship. I'm getting a pointer. This is how good this is. But yeah, this is nice. Let me, uh, I'm sorry. It's tricky to shoot in the afternoon because it's a little tiny bit darker in my office, even with lamps. This is nice too. Really, really beautiful. This is cool. Classic art Adams right there. Very, very cool. Okay, we got to hustle though because we're, we're never going to get through really anything. We'll just look at the money shots, but I'll show you some of the pages too. But you guys want the money. <laughs> This is money. Wow, this is such a great piece. Wow, so good. Look at the pose. Man, that is so cool. Oh my god, that's beautiful. That is just, it's so three-dimensional. He's so great at that. This is really, really nice. Man, that is awesome. Art is still kicking ass. I think I said this in another video. I just saw some new pieces that he did. I don't know if they're online yet, but anyway. Oh my god, they were amazing. He's still just crushing it. So again, we're going to hustle through these, so I apologize Like if you get sort of a... We probably won't flip through this full book. We'll just try to find a few more Godzilla pages, then we'll move on to the next comic. Um, I'll try to devote like eight minutes to each book, maybe, or some, something like that. This is a nice page. I love this. The full figure of her standing there is great. Just like narrating. The Gumby special is interesting too. That was like a little tricky to find back in back for me at least. Most of them I got at my local comic book shops too, but you know, a long time ago. But yeah, I would I I got this book called the Comic Book Index, which now would be like the equivalent of probably going on like Wikipedia or something like that. Um, and uh, it really listed quite methodically just about everyone that had ever worked in American comics at least, and what they had worked on, pinups, covers, the whole nine yards. It was really really cool. Came out in around 1995, and um. I use that book to find so much stuff and I would just have this list, you know, like a Michael Golden list and you'd be like, you need to find, you know, some random fill in issue that he did that there was a pinup in or whatever. Like, that's great. But it was really fun. It was a little, like a little like treasure hunting in a way. They were out in the wild. <laughs> right. That's what all the collectors say. <laughs> Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Rich. I've been hunting for comics out in the wild. 
That's like that's most comic book um, collectors' channels. <laughs> You have to do it in your car. <laughs> There's this one guy that I follow. He's only got like probably like three or four hundred subscribers, but uh, he always does his videos outside the comic book store. Like he just got them, and then he'll uh, he'll review them. He he does good reviews though. He's really passionate about comics, and that's why I follow them. Is is I actually like that he's so into it. You know, and he's building a following. You know, slowly but surely. I wonder. I'd be curious how many subs he has now. I love, I honestly, I, that's one of my favorite things on YouTube is just people that are really into collecting stuff. You know, generally I watch stuff that I'm into, but, you know, toy collectors and stuff like that that just have killer, like a Godzilla toy collection. I would never collect it myself, but that stuff is just fascinating to me. That's great. Look at that. That's such a nice panel. Dude, that looks like straight out of a movie. So we're at six minutes. We'll go two more minutes with this book. Godzilla. <laughs> oh, dude, come on. How are you going to fight Godzilla? Look at you. You're a little tiny samurai. This guy's going to bring it, though. He's got something. There's something up. <laughs> Is that a hypodermic needle? <laughs> They're going to shoot him in the butt. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, in the toe. Come on. Should have shot him in the butt. That would have been awesome. That's really cool. Sorry, I went fast there. I wanted to see that face. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up so we can get to the next book. Let's look at this. I'm scared. There's probably someone that knows this book inside and out, and it's like, no, Rich, you gotta show page twenty two because it's the best page ever. All right, we'll go through fast and just see him. All right, I have to pause. I can't turn the page. This is awesome. Look at that pose. Man, what a great shot, too, man. He moved the camera, like, up above him. That's not true. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. Everyone's locked in the house. <laughs> Godzilla. Whoa. Oh, that's a really nice design. Colors. The colors are actually really, really nice on this, this comic. I, I like the the choices that the person's making. They're pretty cool. And it's simple, you know, simple flat colors, but sometimes that can look really great if you choose the right colors. I mean, not, not all of them are winners. <laughs> look at that. Dude, that is so awesome. Man, art is so good. Okay, we're going to stop this book here, though. we got to get to the other one, so we I would be doing you a disservice. But we can come back and take our time. I had to show you the back cover. The back cover is awesome. <laughs> On YouTube, hello! <laughs> People, if it's not the cats, it's humans. Okay, let's go to the next. Okay, so we're going to look at these X factors real quick. Um, one of these I like more than the other, and it's funny. It was I was trying to remember what the reasoning was. I, I think one maybe Art inks himself, and one is inked by Al Milgram. And it's not so much that the, the Milgram inks are bad, but I just think that one was better. This is such a great page, though. But yeah, there was one that was kind of like really awesome, and then one that was pretty good. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? We'll see. That's just my recollection. There was something different about the two. That that's what I remember. I haven't honestly looked at these in probably seven or eight years. God, art is just so freaking good. Oh yeah, this kid. He looks like he would write in Marvel. <laughs> I don't know, like a Marvel writer from like the seventies. Oh, that's cool. It's funny because this guy reminded me of Captain Stern from uh, had the heavy metal movie, and then this other guy looks like him too. It's funny. I don't know what 
I'll turn the page. Yeah, this kind of looks like the same sort of structure. It's funny. Burden's too good for him. Hanging's too good for him. He should be torn into little bitsy pieces and buried alive. I think that's from Heavy Metal. If not, that's from something else. <laughs> Isn't that what he says when he's, like, changing? Stern. That's a cool face. It's <laughs> just like, Ooh. yeah. I think this one's more simple. Okay, so we're gonna go to the other one. Stay with me. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna soak in one of them in a deeper dive. Okay, we'll see if my hunch was right. Like I said, like I said, it's like I said. Oh, this is Alma Ogram too. We'll see. I, one of them, I don't know what I liked about it more. It's such a weird, like, random memory of the two books. I think what it was is because I would always have limited space in, like, my studio. And so I would usually have, like, a, like two long boxes and maybe, like, one short box. And that's about all the comics I keep in my studio. I have tons of books, but... um. Yeah, so I get picky, and I'll kind of remember the ones that sort of stay in the office or, like, scenarios of, like, I had to pick. Right now, honestly, I only have one short box of comics, but I have probably about a long box of loose comics that are on different shelves that I brought in. Man, that's so awesome. But not far away. I have many, many comics. <laughs> want to sell them it's shitty market to sell stuff though <clears throat> i had just popped up stuff on ebay and then all this went down i'm just like oh man come on ain't nobody buying nothing right now except for water and food that's cool <laughs> his face he looks like a troll a little bit or something that's cool god man i'm terrible at poses like that they're so hard. And it's funny because his upper torso actually looks quite small and his legs are pretty big. I mean, it's kind of the way he draws him, but I would, if I did that, it would look weird. It just wouldn't work. I'd overdraw it or something. It would, it would end up being funky. These are great too. Oh yeah, this is nice. I think this one has a little more finesse and maybe a little small, smaller detail. And I kind of, I tend to like that, so... The little drawings that are all like super detailed. That's great, man. Look at that. Hopefully, the double video thing is fun. I actually uploaded um, about a 25 minute video of me inking digitally for Patreon. I don't really ink digitally that often. I did on the um, Damn Fraga He Man Masters of the Multiverse book uh, setting up pages. Uh, but but because I don't want to go to the printer right now, um, I'm actually inking a double page spread digitally. In uh, I'm I'm using Manga Studio Five EX, but I have Clip Studio here. But I only really ink with the mapping pen in it, so I don't really need much more. The irony is I have like 800 custom brushes, more than that, probably a thousand. Because <laughs> I. A while back, I had got the friend and brushes that were like, I don't know, it was like 15 bucks for 800 brushes. Oh, that's cool. I feel like I've done like a study of that or something similar. I can't remember. It's a really cool, that's cool too. Man, his legs are great. That's great. It's so ornate and detailed. God, he's nuts. Well, and Milgram inked this stuff. He did a great job. Man, that's awesome. It looks like they were having a lot of fun. You know what I bet? 
Wait, let me see something. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a theory. Now this is after the other issue. I was thinking maybe they had more time on the first issue. Now I'm thinking that either uh Yeah, I don't know. They find they fine tuned it though for sure. That's great. Look at that panel. Yeah, sometimes deadlines can can mess with you and then you know you people just see it in the book with no sort of point of reference of like what you were actually sort of like dealing with doing the book. So it's like can be a little unfair on the artists sometimes. Okay, this is just an ad. Oh, this is such a great panel. I always love this. So moody. Look at that. Oh god, it's great. That's nice too. Those little poses. Who were we looking at? Oh, was it? Who was it? We were, I did a video recently. I don't know. Did I upload it? Or I don't even know what it was. Someone who could draw great. Oh, it was, it was Jim Lee. I did an X-Men thing for Patreon. It just was random. I, I had gone through a stack of paper in my office. And there happened to be like one comic book just sort of mixed in with a huge stack of like printer paper. Like with sketches on it and all this stuff, and I and I it was I think X Men two seventy seven. So just for the hell of it, I was like, well, I wanted to flip through it. I'm like, I'll just make a video of it and sort of do my reaction to seeing it because I hadn't looked at it in a long time. But yeah, Jim could draw great little tiny figures, and man, they were so tight. And Scott Williams inks on them were great. But yeah, I mean, Art did the same thing here. Those are small figures, and this is on newsprint too. If you saw the original of that or a better reproduction, those would be they're, they're pretty good. Oh, yeah, this is such a great panel, too. The gate on that thing is awesome. If you're into, like, prehistoric stuff, I would recommend William Stout, if you've never heard of him. And and William Stout stuff is very, very detailed, too, so it would actually be fun for you if you've never checked out his work. He's at Comic-Con every year. I always see him. He's got, like, a pretty, pretty big booth kind of by um, Mignola and those guys. Nice. So we're at 17 minutes. We're doing okay. Got to keep it rolling just so that we can get everything in. This is nice too. Man, what a great panel. Yeah, hopefully everyone's hanging in there. This is a little stressful. I have to be honest. It's like sometimes it's not and other times it kind of is. <laughs> You always have that friend or two that keeps sending you, like, the most horrible news, like, in texts. I'm like, bro, bro, I'm trying to avoid this shit. I'm going to my happy place. And they're like, dude. <laughs> That's cool. Is Dazzler showing up? What's going on here? Okay, so then, uh, oh, there's more. Hey, God, he does this so good. It's really interesting, too, is art will do this thing where they stand on the panel border. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you don't see a ton of artists do that, but it's funny. It's like kind of his thing. And sometimes even a little part of the foot will sort of drop down just the tiniest bit. But he generally, he'll put them right on that. It's a very, very interesting technique that um, I think could look weird, but he's just got it down. So it, it, it ends up looking nice. Like he did it here, too. Isn't that funny? up to turn the page. <clears throat> this is wrapping it up. <laughs> it's like, meep, meep, meep. Okay, let me grab another book. All right. Web of Spider-Man annual. Look at this. This is so good. Watch this. He's crazy. Oh, David Letterman. Frankenstein. Godzilla, see you know, King Kong doll. The pages are whiter on this, but there's a little yellowing. <sighs> Man, if only I knew when I was younger and collecting. I just was like, I didn't 
grading wasn't like a it is important. What well, was not that it wasn't important, but you know, you'd find an amazing Spider Man by Todd McFarlane and just be like, oh, oh shit, they have it. Oh, get it now. Nice car. Damn, that is really good. <clears throat> really cool panel. That's nice. Wow, it's so cool. Bonkers. I don't even, I've never even heard of that candy. Bonkers. <laughs> I bet I know what happens when you eat it. Get him, Spider-Man. Freedom? The freedom to be terrified. Run. That's a weird looking dude. What is going on with that dude's face? It's like, is that a beard? <laughs> it's a little hard to tell. <sighs> Sorry, I don't mean to yawn. I actually I inked the full page today. I was just ready to start a second half of a double page spread. But I was like, the day was slipping away, and I wanted to make sure that I got this video recorded. I'm going to upload it immediately, so you guys will get it as fast as possible. There's Letterman. He does a nice Spider-Man. That's great. It's funny because like every year at Comic Con, it's like almost a must have to get the Arthur Adams sketchbook. You didn't do comic, con you didn't do Comic Con if you didn't get it. He has some great prints too. He sells. Uh, I just have no room for prints anymore. I was like, oh, oh god damn, these pages are hard to turn. Yeah, it just sucks because it's like I would get more prints, but they just all go in my closet. The pages in this book are pretty white still. It's like a little bit of yellowing. But it's still not in that good of shape. And I've been bending the pages a little bit as what we've been flipping through it. I honestly, my comic book collection overall, except for a few books, is, is I really do consider them tools. Tools for me to learn. Tools for me to be inspired by. And uh, that's how I've always kind of viewed my collection. Man, that is a great panel. If I really was going to collect, collect, like, seriously, then, I mean, you know, you want to buy the most primo shit possible. I love, uh, like, uh, how Dan Fraga has that spinner rack in his um, studio. I think that's really fun. Would be neat. I don't have the room for something like that, but that would be really cool. Dan probably is watching this. He loves Arthur Adams. Dan, if you're out there, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, your spinner rack is awesome. <laughs> it is really neat. Jim had one in his office and just like he would, they would just fill it full of like old Wildstorm books. So it was nothing too, too fancy. But, but as time went on, it was actually more interesting to look at them because they were books from like 10 years earlier, but you know, it would be like pit and backlash or whatever, you know, that, that they had, we would get all the image comps. So it, you know, Whatever day the new comics would come in, they would lay them all out, and then we would get a pick uh, which books we wanted to keep. Um, you know, and in theory, you're supposed to take one each. So it was cool. Well, when Spawn would come out or whatever it was, we'd get a copy. Savage Dragon. That's really cool. It's like albino Godzilla. I don't know. He's cool looking, man. 
Or he could do a really good Land of the Lost comic book. <laughs> Dopey, grumpy, uh, the Slee stack. It would be awesome. Sigh. <laughs> Okay, we're 25. we got to get to another book. So anyway, you got a taste of that one. That's really cool. But here, let's go. Next book. I think people would kill me if I didn't go through a little bit of this X-Men annual. So, let's do it. so this is X-Men annual number 12. I think he did like three or four in a row. I could be wrong on that, but... Let's see. Oh, and this is with Bob Wycheck inks. This is... Like, I would prefer to have the one with Arthur's inks. Oh, that's cool. Man, look at that panel. It's nuts. Sorry, the book doesn't want to open all the way. It's Fairchild. <laughs> Caitlin Fairchild. Oh, man. The fan mail that those characters used to get was hysterical. Because I was real good friends with Sarah Becker and J. Scott Campbell. And uh, we would read all the fan mail. And oh, my goodness. Fairchild was truly loved. <laughs> Savage Land. <laughs> oh man, that's a cool shot. Epic. Like now, I can't even imagine how he would draw it. <laughs> it would be so detailed. He would render everything. <laughs> Wolvie. We'll Root. Yeah, art does good dinosaurs. Brett Booth is really into dinosaurs, too. And Brett loves Arthur Adams. I could definitely, definitely see that as an influence on him. It's a nice Wolvie. He's cool. Very cartoony, but it's, man, it's great. That shot of Colossus Scott squatting is really nice. It's two tough poses, cross legs and then squatting. He did a good job. Little figures, love these test of a true comicer. You got your little figures down. Oh, this guy's cool. Look at that. That's a cool robot. All right, so I think we're going to go to the Gum the Gumby book and just to end on that. I think that'll be fun. It's a little different. This is nice. But again, we can always come back to art. I have a big collection. I brought in like the long shot mini series, like the trade of it, and I have the single issues too, but I have I have a lot. All the Monkey Man and O'Brien is fun. And even the Tomorrow stories stuff was great he was drawing those huge okay so let me switch books here real quick it's nice okay i want to show you the front and the back of this really quick so i don't forget because the back is kind of neat <clears throat> his face was dave Chappelle when he's had too many blunts <laughs> It's sort of a joke about when he came on John Mayer's live stream the other night. He sounded really wasted. It was really funny. <laughs> Gumby. Oh, wait. Pokey. Yeah, that's Pokey, I think. I'll take him away. These are nice. God, man. That's so cool. 
Campbell just like loved stuff like this. I mean, you could see his whole career. He's done such neat little things like this, paper dolls and just all kinds of real wacky stuff. His sketchbooks are always really interesting to look at. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, the pleasure of watching Campbell put together Danger Girl it was really, really interesting. Watching him so methodically go through literally everything. Um, it was it was really, really cool. And a lot of it you can see in that the the Danger Girl sketchbook. And this was done in 1988, so this is quite early for art. <laughs> That's so funny. They're nice little cartoon, like cartoony drawings though. But man, look at that! That's a great, great drawing. Really solid. <laughs> Yikes, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's really kind of cute. I, I never really followed Gumby or Pokey. <laughs> I don't know what he's all about. I'm assuming he's like a toy. I don't know. It's nice. I mean, honestly, like if you want a good exercise to like just limber up your drawing muscles, try to draw Gumby, move him around. He's a little bit of a he's like a little perspective problem for uh, rectangles. He's like the um. The flower sack that they show in the Disney um, Illusion of Life. Oh shoot, we're okay. We're running out of time. I'm gonna have to end the video because it's it's gonna it'll start a new video and I won't be able to tell. All right, have a great day, everyone. Take it easy. I'll be back tomorrow with two videos again. And uh, yeah, if you have any requests, let me know. And I mean, I'll I'll do my best to try to cover them as soon as possible. It just depends on what I can get at. But all right, have a great day. Love you all. And I'll talk to you later. Destroy that like button. Thank you. Bye bye.